Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And we often talk about the performance of, let's say, desktop processors from Intel or from uh, AMD or, or GPUs from Nvidia and from AMD. We might even talk about, you know, smartphones and the latest processor from Qualcomm or from Apple or from Samsung. And we talk about their performance and sometimes we talk about their power efficiency. There is another whole category of processors where it is important to talk about the performance and the power efficiency and that's with microcontroller boards. So we're talking, you know, the Raspberry Pi Pico, with all the Arduinos, STM32 Black Pill, Blue Pill. We're talking about the ESP32 uh, systems. So in this video, I want to look at the performance and the power usage of the different processors that we get in microcontroller systems. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> Okay, so when it comes to 32-bit microcontroller systems, there are two main companies that are making uh, CPUs at the moment. We'll talk about RISC-V at the uh, end of the video. But we're actually talking about ARM's Cortex-M, M for microcontroller, and you've got a whole series of processors that are basically have different numbers, and the higher the number, the more features and the more performance you get. So at the low end, you've got the Cortex-M0+, Plus. And that's what you find in the Raspberry Pi Pico, for example. Then you've got the Cortex M3, the M4, the M7. And these you might find in the blue pill, the black pill, and so on. Then you've also got the ESP32 systems. They're built on the Tensilica Extensor LX6 uh, processor, which is a custom processor by Cadence Systems. And it really is designed for just uh, embedded systems. You won't hear about that, you know, in, in laptops or, or anything like that. And they've been very, very popular, this ESP32 uh, systems, which include Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and these uh, CPUs are very, very popular, particularly for boards that come directly from China. Now, of course, the first thing we have to say is that these are all different, of course. The extensor CPU is very different to an ARM CPU, and even ARM CPUs are the same type of CPU on different boards might have different characteristics because of frequency, because of the speed of the buses, the speed of the RAM, the speed of the flash, how much caching they put into it, and so on. So not everything is equal just because it says it's an M3 or a Cortex M4 doesn't mean it'll be the same as some other Cortex M3 or M4 from another manufacturer. And just because the ESP32 says it's running at 240 megahertz, does that mean necessarily that it's faster or has better power efficiency or whatever? And so that's what we're going to look at, which has the greatest performance, which uses the less power, which one has the greatest power efficiency, uh, how much can it get done using a particular amount of power. OK, so let's dive straight in. OK, so to test out the performance of the CPU on these microcontroller boards, I created a very simple test that uses trial by division. Not the most efficient way of finding primes, but I intentionally did that so that it deliberately goes through the first million numbers to try to find uh, all the primes that are in that first a million and the test is surprisingly repeatable across all of the boards whether it's an ESP32, whether it's an STM32, whether it's the Raspberry Pi Pico, the results always come back the time taken within within one millisecond. Now I'm using the Arduino IDE rather than using you know a specific one for STM32, a specific one for ESP, I'm using the IDE from our Arduino and I'm using the same sketch, the same code for each board, I just change the board compiler and just say compile it for this board i've got the right official packages installed and i use minus o3 whenever that's available and as i said very repeatable there's uh, it's always the same now if this video is interesting and people would like to see it, i'm more than happy to develop uh, a greater range of uh, benchmarks not just this trial by division maybe more some in memory intensive more some cpu intensive floating point intensive if you would like to see that kind of thing, then please do let me know in the comments below. OK, so here is our first graph and there's going to be quite a few graphs for us to go through because it really is the easiest way to understand the numbers of visual representation. And basically, this is the time it takes in a milliseconds to run that test to find the happens to be 78,497 primes in the first uh, million integers. And as we can see, uh, the slowest is the blue pill, and that's got the Cortex M3 running at 72 megahertz. That takes around 42 seconds to find all those numbers. Then there's quite a leap down when we go up to the uh, the uh, black pill, which got the Cortex M4 running at 100 megahertz. It's actually the uh, Magma Splash, which is the black pill board built in Europe, and I've got a video about that here on this channel. Then next is the Raspberry Pi Pico 
running at 133 megahertz and that takes about 18 seconds so these are the slower ones we're running in the 100 megahertz or less kind of area 72 100 133 and then there's you go from 18 seconds to 9 seconds so here's a big leap in performance so when you go to the ESP32 running at 240 megahertz so quite a faster than these other ones that really takes nine seconds and in fact if you use the STM uh, Cortex M7 discovery board then that actually only takes 8.3 seconds so a second faster while actually only running at 216 uh, megahertz compared to 240 so the ESP32 puts in a very strong performance and it certainly beats the Cortex M0, the Cortex M3, the Cortex M4, but it is beaten by the Cortex M7 in terms of raw performance. How long does it take to do that calculation? But of course, this is the thing, the uh, clock speeds are very different. So they, some stuff could be hiding around here. You know, what happens if the Raspberry Pi could be clocked faster? Well, actually it can. What happens if the ESP32 was run slower? Well, in fact, it can. So we can actually fiddle with the clock speeds and get uh, some different numbers. So that's what I've did. Let's look at some different numbers physically changing the clock speed in software to make it run. So here's a whole bunch of different numbers. So the slowest here, uh, just a bit slower than the blue pill running at its native 72 megahertz is the Cortex M0 in the Pico running at 50 megahertz. That takes 48 seconds, 42 seconds. If you slow down the ESP32 to 80 megahertz, then that comes in at 28 seconds. So while the blue pill is running at 72 megahertz, when you run this one at 80, very, very close number, you can see a significant performance there. So the ESP32 were doing very well. 100 megahertz for the black pill, again, remaining at its 22 seconds. Uh, here's the reference point, the Pico running at its 133 megahertz. If you run the ESP32 at 160 megahertz, so these are quite close in clock speed, 14 seconds versus 18 seconds. So you can see there's not too much of a difference between these two. In fact, we'll narrow that down more precisely in a minute. But here's the interesting one. You can actually overclock the Raspberry Pi Pico to 240 megahertz. So you've got both of them running now at 240 megahertz. 9.3 seconds versus 9.9 .9 seconds. So the Raspberry Pi Pico just a tiny tad slower than the ESP32. And of course, still the winner running at its native 216 megahertz was the uh, Cortex F7 uh, there in the discovery board. So that's an interesting thing. This one particularly, when you bring the Pico in the ESP32 to a similar clock speed, you're actually getting similar performance. Now, of course, we can now extrapolate and interpolate and actually work out how much you performance you get per megahertz. So what I did is I took all those numbers and then worked out what happens if they were all just running at one megahertz, what would be the speed we get? Now it's not perfect because obviously the CPU may run at one speed, but then you've got buses and you've got RAM access and flash access. They're going to be at different speeds, just depending on how the system is uh, designed. However, when I've done my actual physical measuring here with actually, you know, changing the clock speed and the numbers I get in a minute, they're pretty close, taking into account there are going to be buses running at different speeds. So let's have a look at those numbers. So here we are. So this is what the, the speed is, how long it would take to find all those uh, prime numbers if it was running at one megahertz. Okay, much, much bigger numbers. Look at here, much, much, much bigger numbers. But what we find is that in third place, we have the Magma Splash Black Pill with the uh, M4 processor running inside of it, 2.2 million uh, milliseconds. Then in second place, we've got the ESP 32 running at 2.24, 2.25, 2.24-milliseconds. 2 uh, Notice here we've got the 2.39-milliseconds uh, for the Pico. So again, you can see now that when you work it out on a per megahertz basis, these three chips are pretty close. Uh, in fact, but you still get the Cortex M7 winning there at 1.8 million milliseconds. So that's the overall winner, whichever way we slice it up. But we can see here that there is a good performance uh, a parity between a Cortex M4 and the ESP32 and the uh, Cortex M0 Plus is not too far behind. Now it's just worth mentioning at this point that not all Cortex M0 Plus boards are the same. So the Pico, the RP24 processor in the Pico seems to be particularly uh, good 
uh, and well optimized. These other two boards that I've tested here, one is the MKR1000, which is an official board from uh, Arduino. That's an official Arduino board. The other one is the Jade Pebble. That's also made here in Europe, uh, available from the same a company that makes that Magma Splash, the Blackpool one. This is, that both of these use the microchip ATSAM D21, which is a Cortex-M0 CPU running at 48 megahertz. As you can see though, there's the MKR1000, there is the uh, Pebble, but as you can see, there's a huge difference in performance between these two chips using the, uh, these two boards using the ATSAM and the Raspberry Pi Pico. So uh, not all Cortex-M0 cores are the same. Here we're talking process node, caching, bus speeds, RAM speeds, flash speeds, whole bunch of things that are put together, the, the fabric that ties it all together, how well does it do? And clearly the RP2040 is a, is a much su superior chip to the ATSAM D21. Okay, so that's performance. So we, we can see that the uh, Cortex M7 and the ESP32 do a great job in terms of raw performance. I want this done quickly. But of course, there's also a measure of how much current is being used. Now it's possible to measure the current on a board using Ohm's law and measuring the voltage drop across uh, a shunt. But it's important to note a couple of things. This is measuring the power of the board, not of the individual uh, microprocessors. So for example, I don't have any LEDs turned on if I can avoid that. And for example, boards that have got Wi-Fi on will automatically use more current because there's a second chip probably on there or, a, or extra part of the chip that's being powered to offer Wi-Fi. Even though it's not connected, even though it's not actually asked to be doing anything, it's there. And so you'll find the Wi-Fi boards use more current uh, just from the start. Okay, a lot of numbers here, but this is the current usage for all the different boards. And I've done it at different frequencies just to show you that frequency has a big part to play in terms of the current that's used. So the higher the frequency, the higher the current. The lower the frequency, the lower the current. That's one of the laws of power consumption that board designers have to take into account. If you want greater frequency, you're gonna use more current. It's a simple uh, as that. So right down here on the left-hand side, we can see the Jade Pebble uh, running at 48 megahertz, only using 12 uh, milliamps. And the Pico, if you clock it right down to 50 megahertz, only using 13 milliamps. What's really interesting though, is that the Magma Splash with the M4, Cortex M4 on it, is running 20 milliamps while running at 100 megahertz. And you can look here, the Pico W, which of course has got the Wi-Fi stuff, the MKR1000, which has got the Wi-Fi stuff, are all using the same kind of power, but running at half the clock speed. Uh, and in fact, uh, even the Pico itself running at 133 megahertz, all in this band of 20 up to 25 uh, uh, milliamps. So the, the, the power efficiency here of the Magma Splash is pretty impressive. So it's right down at the bottom, but yet running at 100 megahertz. So that's, that's worth noting, and it will actually become a factor uh, in a minute, we'll see that. And the other thing to notice here is the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So that's the one with the silver tin on it here that's actually got the Wi-Fi chip inside of it. That runs at 35 milliamps. Although the Wi-Fi isn't connected, it isn't asked to be doing anything, it is there on the board and it powers up. And that's distinct from 25 milliamps for the normal Pico without the Wi-Fi. So both running at the same clock speed, but notice you're gonna get a bump in power consumption when you add that Wi-Fi chip onto the same board and it's gonna be powered up when you power it on. But the real surprise is this, when we go right up here, to the ESP32 running at 240 megahertz, which did offer us some raw performance. It's a real power hog, 69 milliamps. Well, that's way different down here to the, to the Cortex M4 running only 20, 25, 35, this thing. And also interestingly, even if you slow it down to 80 megahertz, okay, so an eight, reduce the speed to a quarter, it's still using more power than the Raspberry Pi Pico and obviously more than the Raspberry Pi, uh, the Pico W, more than the Pico and more than the Magma. Uh, so basically when you look at this, the ESP32 is quite a power hog when you, uh, when you run it. And even if you take the Pico W and overclock it to 240 megahertz, it's still only using 49 milliamps compared to the 69 by the ESP32. So while the ESP32 was able to offer us that good performance, it, ha it uses power to do that. Now, one thing you'll notice, I haven't got the Cortex M7, and that's because the board that I used 
uh, has a built-in display and there was no way of turning that built-in display off by software or any jumpers or anything. And so the, the amp users were just out of this world because it was powering that display. And I wasn't about to go and take a pair of uh, cutters and start cutting bits off the board. So it doesn't feature here in the power con uh, consumption um, numbers. So here is the big question. If board A only uses 20 milliamps, but takes 22 seconds to complete a task, but board B uses 69 milliamps, but takes nine seconds to complete the task, which one's faster? So basically, this is the Magma with the Cortex-M4 processor, right? This is the ESP32, low power consumption, but it took 22 seconds to find all those primes. This one, much higher power consumption, but it was one of the fastest. Uh, much faster than the Pico, much faster than the Magma. So which board is more efficient? Well, we can do the calculations in uh, milliwatt hours, which is a unit of measuring uh, power over time, and you'll be quite surprised to see the results. So here we go. Uh, the lowest power consumption is actually from the Magma Splash and the Raspberry Pi Pico, not the W version, just the right, they're almost the same. This one is actually slightly better. So this means that if you actually wanted to do this calculation, it will draw power from a battery, or it will draw power from your power supply, and it will use 0.63 milliwatt hours to do that calculation. But it will take longer than it would for an ESP32 to do it, but the overall power it uses, even though it's taking longer, is less. And this is the, the trick to this. How much does it take uh, considering time as a factor? So if you just said, I want to just calculate these primes and use the least power as possible, you'd want to use the Pico or the Magma. Now, though, these two here are the uh, ones with the e e e e Wi-Fi built into them. And you can see the Pico W is slightly more efficient than the ESP32 because although it will take longer to do the calculation, it uses less energy to do it. And as a comparison here, we have the blue pill, uh, which is quite significantly double the energy used. So the blue pill is, is not that uh, efficient uh, at all. So if you start handing out the prizes, first prize to the Magma Splash and the Pico for their energy efficiency during an intensive compute task. Second place to the Pico W, because it is actually slightly more power efficient than the ESP32, which comes in in third place. So what are our conclusions? Well, the Cortis M7 based STM32 discovery board was the fastest, even though it was only clocked 216 megahertz. Again, tell me in the comments below, should I try and get hold of a Cortis M7 board, uh, maybe another type of STM uh, development board without a display on it? Uh, and see what kind of numbers they get. That do tell me in the comments below if you think that would be interesting. The Cortis M4 base black pill has almost the same per megahertz performance as an ESP32, though it is clocked at a much lower clock speed. And the Cortis M0 Plus based Pico W uses only 35 milliamps to run the test at 133 megahertz, whereas the ESP32 needs 41 milliamps while running at only 80 megahertz. So this is the basis of the fact that the Pico W actually is more power efficient. And so the most efficient boards are the Cortex M4 base black pill and the Cortex M0 Pico without the uh, Wi-Fi. And then if you add the Wi-Fi, it's still more power efficient than the ESP32. Okay, so there you have it. There's my look at the ARM processors versus the ESP32. I think those conclusions there are pretty solid. Now, I did say we would mention RISC-V. RISC-V is now starting to turn up in a few uh, microcontrollers. I've got two on order from different companies using the ESP32C3, which is a RISC-V version of the ESP32. Hopefully they're gonna come in the next few days. I have to order them from China. So it's gonna take a little while till they get there. Once I get those, I'm gonna do a similar type of video uh, using the uh, ESP32 uh, with the RISC-V processor. It, tell me any questions you particularly have about that in the comments below so I can make sure I address those in the video. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, if you want to watch that video on the RISC-V microcontroller, then subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.